Hello, my YouTube friends. If you're new to live streaming and you aren't sure how to get started, this is the video for you. I'm gonna walk you through the quick steps you need to take to configure OBS to go live in like five minutes. Really easy. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. If you're just starting your live streaming journey, OBS is an open source, free software platform that you can use to go live on nearly any platform, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, wherever. There is no question that OBS can be a bit overwhelming when you first get started because it has so many features. But once you figure it out, it's actually pretty simple and you can put together amazingly professional looking live broadcasts in no time. If you wanna check it out for yourself, there's a link in the description. This is what you see when you open OBS for the first time. I'll get to everything in the overlay in just a moment, but first let's go into settings here on the right and set up our stream. Honestly, it's usually the most overwhelming part because there's so many settings and options but I'm gonna make it easy for you. Let's look at output first. This is the most important area to look at for producing a quality stream. First, we need to determine the upload speed for your connection. To do this, you need to locate the speed test for your ISP or just use a speed test site on the internet. I have RCN, so I do a search. It's really easy to find. You wanna make sure you're testing your upload speed. Once you determine your upload speed, this is going to dictate the max resolution and frame rate you can stream at. Let's look at this chart and decide the optimal resolution and frame rate. For YouTube, you can see here, if you want to stream at 1080 and 30 frames per second, you need an upload speed of 3.8 to 7.4 megabits per second. Depending upon where you fall in this range, that means you're going to need a bit rate in the output tab between 3000 and 6000 kilobytes per second. If you plan to stream games on YouTube, you should be using 60 frames per second. For a 1080 stream, you need an upload speed between 5.6 and 11 megabits per second. That means you'd set your bit rate between 4500 and 9000 kilobytes per second. If you're a gamer with a slower connection, you should move to 720 at 60 if you can't do 60 frames per second at 1080. Remember that a lot of your audience is watching on a cell phone anyways, so make it the best connection you can, but don't stress about it. The most important thing is you don't want your stream to buffer all the time. This will kill viewership big time. Now that we know what your connection can handle, put in your proper bit rate for the resolution you plan to stream at. Next, select your encoder. If you're using a PC with an NVIDIA graphics card, then use the NVIC encoder. Otherwise, select X264 Software Encoder. Set your audio bitrate to 160 and your encoder preset to very fast. This will give you a good quality image, but also not tax your computer's CPU too much. That's all for the output tab. Now let's set up our canvas and output settings. So go into video. Our canvas size will be set at the resolution we decided to stream at given our connection speed. So if it was 1920 or 720, set that here. Next, our output settings should be the same as our canvas. This will avoid any extra work by our CPU having to scale your output. This makes the choice of downscale filter totally irrelevant. We won't be downscaling. Set your frames per second at the rate you decided from the speed test. Now we're all set in the output tab. The last thing we need to do is set up our connection to the platform we want to stream to. In the streaming tab, click the service dropdown and select the service you want to stream to, either Twitch or YouTube, YouTube Gaming. Under server for YouTube, select primary. For Twitch, you can leave it on auto and it'll select the best local server for your stream. The next box is the stream key. For YouTube, you can find this by clicking go live on the dashboard. Select stream now at the bottom. Scroll to the encoder setup and copy the stream key here and paste it in the stream key box in OBS. For Twitch, log in and click the icon in the top right. Select settings, then select channel and videos. The stream key is at the top. 
copy it out and paste it in the stream key box in OBS. Now we're all set up to stream. Let's create our first scene so we can go live. OBS uses a scene structure and each scene can have different elements like cameras, videos, overlays, or music. You can easily change from one scene to the other by clicking the scene you want. OBS automatically starts with a scene created so we can right click on it and rename it. Let's call this one first. Now we can add elements to the scene in sources. This box defines what's in the scene. Let's add a camera here. Click the plus below sources and select video capture device. Call your device my camera and click OK. Here's where Windows and Mac are different. On your Mac, you're going to have device. This is your camera, you're just going to select that. Then, if you're using anything above 720, you're going to want to drop this down and select high, and it will fill out your window at 1920 by 1080. And that looks great, but you'll notice that it does not add a microphone. So we're going to go in here and add an audio input, and I'm going to call this my mic, and click OK. I'm going to drop this down and select my cam link. That's my DSLR. And there we go, now we have a microphone added. So that's a little different than it is on the PC. On the PC, we're also gonna put in my camera. And when we click OK, you can see we have a lot of different options. We're gonna drop down device and select our camera. It's gonna be the same one, my cam link. Then I'm going to go into this resolution FPS type and I'm gonna select custom. And then I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 as my resolution so it fills out the screen. Now if I just click OK, you're going to notice that the scene has added a microphone. But what microphone? So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go to Use Custom Audio Device. And you can see it did not add the correct microphone, it added General Webcam. That's definitely not what we want. We want to select our Cam Link microphone and click OK. Now we're sure that we have the correct microphone. But on a PC, it's really important to understand that you need to make sure that you have the correct microphone selected. Or you might just be hearing complete garbage and you don't know why. Now I want to quickly demo the things that you can do within the scene structure. So I'm going to go over to scenes and I'm going to click the plus and we're going to add a scene. We'll call this one intro and click OK. So let's say that you wanted to add a video at the beginning before your live stream that kind of intros your live stream. Now we're going to click the plus in sources Go to media source. I'm gonna call this one bumper so I know what it is. Click OK. Now we have a bunch of different options. Obviously we want to select a local file. You can have this file looped. We're not gonna do that for a bumper. There are just a lot of things you can do here. But we're gonna browse and we're going to find a video file that we're going to use as our bumper. And that looks fine. Click open and click OK. Now this scene is playing this intro file right here. And I'm gonna just move it up. So we know that that's the first scene we're going to use. Now if I click first in scenes, you can see that it transitions from my intro to my camera view. Let's add one more scene. This is a kind of common scene. This would be the scene that you would use after your live stream is over. We're gonna call it end and click okay. Then I'm going to click the plus and I'm just going to add some text in here to show you a little bit about how the text feature works. So I'm going to select text GDI plus and I'm going to call this thanks and click OK. And I'm going to go in and change my font. This is a font I commonly use. And then I'm going to type my text in the text box. Then if I scroll down a little bit. I can select this alignment tool here and center my text and then I'm just going to click OK and I can resize it any way I want, put it in the center and now you can see we'd go right to the intro, we'd transition to our camera which would be our live stream and when the stream is over we just click end and it transitions right to that and that's how the scene structure works. Now you know just enough to be dangerous, you're ready to go live. All you have to do to go live is click the start streaming button under controls and you're going to go live to the channel you have set up. It's that easy. This video won't make you an OBS Pro. That'll take time and experience, but it will get you live streaming quickly and soon enough you will be a pro at it too. 
If you have any questions about OBS live streams, leave a comment. I respond to everyone. If you want to learn an epic trick to put the chat in your OBS overlay, check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.